Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on the Arrowverse and Superman Lois. Today we're going to be talking about the new issue of Earth Prime, the crossover series that is currently going on right now, that is set in the Arrowverse, it's officially canon, however it's in the comic books. And so they just released issue 2 out of 5, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So go read the issue if you haven't seen it, it's Earth Prime issue 2, and it's a Superman Lois issue. So that is available now, you guys can go read it, I really enjoyed this issue, and I'm sure many of you guys read the first issue, which was the Batwoman issue. You got the debut of Clayface in the comics, confirming that he exists, and also confirming the big bad of the crossover, who is in fact Magog from the comics. And so at the end of issue 1, Magog took Clayface with him, promising revenge, and he does the exact same thing at the end of the third part of this issue of Earth Prime to evil black suited Superman. And so we'll get into that in a bit, however let's go bit by bit because there's three separate stories in this issue that are very interesting and they say a lot about Superman and Lois's past, but also to do with the origin of evil Superman from John Henry Irons' Earth. So the anniversary issue, that is what it's called, it's called the anniversary, and basically there is this kind of repeated cycle of days that go by as Superman and Lois try to celebrate their anniversary, their one year anniversary, and that's why they always celebrate it four days afterwards, because of what happened in this issue. And so there's four days of them trying to celebrate their anniversary, it doesn't happen as they're held back by different work instances, normally to do with Superman in regards to Clark, and then with Lois obviously to do with her reporting duties. But on various days there are interesting things that happen, let's just break that down because it introduces a couple new characters to the Arrowverse which is very exciting. So we have Superman who at one point takes on Nuclear Man, Nuclear Man is a character from the comics. This is literally a one page thing, so it's just confirming yes, this character does exist, and Superman has fought him in the past. However, that's all you're going to get from him in this issue. And in regards to the next one, we have Lois who defeats Toy Man, and that's very exciting because, as you guys know, Toy Man showed up in Supergirl, so technically that is a mini Supergirl crossover because Toy Man in Supergirl was Windshot's dad. And so that is a definite link, and I feel like it's an obvious link. I don't know if they're retconning again, because as you know, Superman and Lois is known for retconning Supergirl, like it's the fact that it happens many times throughout the last two seasons. So maybe this is in fact a different version of Toy Man. But if we presume that it's the same version of Toy Man, maybe this is actually Wynn's dad that Lois was trying to take down in regards to, you know, the kind of shady activities that were going on to do with him, and also it's all kind of linked to this intergang story that they have over these four days because Lois eventually ends up taking down intergang as she investigates Mannheim and his links to the mayor who she literally had a meeting with just before. And so that's kind of what happens with Lois over these couple of days because they kind of switch, they have like two things and then Superman has two things and so basically they both can't make it and someone has stood up on each day, but I think one of the most interesting sort of mini segments of those four days is definitely when Superman meets Lobo. And so this is confirmation, this is Lobo in the Arrowverse, it's his debut. We've seen him on Krypton, but that isn't like officially in the Arrowverse, that is just separate. However, it's super cool. And Lobo mentions that a red-headed woman paid him loads of money to bring Superman to her, and obviously Superman gets away as you can see if you've read the issue. However, I'm not sure if they're going to bring that certain person into the comics or into the TV show. Is this a teaser for something to come? I'm not sure. I feel like it's more of an easter egg to a potential character that could have hired Lobo. There's obviously a lot of red-headed women. It could be Maxima, that's the first person that pops to my mind when I think of a red-headed woman that might want to take down Superman and hire Lobo. That would be my guess, but I don't exactly know if this is actually going to come to fruition, or was it just like a little excuse to get Lobo in the comics, because Lobo is a big character, and they knew that if he shows up, this might bring some anticipation for Lobo maybe showing up in a live action show, because you have to remember this 
comic was actually written by a lot of the showrunners and the writers from Superman and Lois. So not really the showrunners, more so the writers. And that means that, you know, maybe this, these are some of the ideas that they're going to bring on to the TV show, maybe next season or the season afterwards. So it's very exciting that we have the official debut of Lobo in the Arrowverse. Okay, so they finally go celebrate, and they go to Hawaii, and the issue is done. So that's four days of craziness, that's just their lives. We all know that from the TV show, they're always so busy, Superman always zipping off. And Lois obviously being in Metropolis, working for the Daily Planet, there is so many stories to be covered. In, you know, Smallville, there is a bit more time to do different things, and that's why they get more family time. That was like their whole reason for moving to Smallville in the first place in season one of Superman Lois. So it makes sense because with this, you can tell that literally they were just so busy in Metropolis. Like there is no way that they could ever find time with them being both so busy. But now being in Smallville, they do have more time, even though say sometimes Clark has to zip off to another part of the world to be Superman. However, Lois is sort of more contained, I guess. Anyway, let's move on to the next story of this issue. So the next story is titled Father's Day. This is a very short story and basically it's about Jonathan and Clark Kent. So Jonathan in terms of Clark's foster dad, so not his son, basically. And so it's like a mini issue talking about the influence of Clark as a journalist and the importance of him as Superman and being both of these at the same time. Obviously recently in the TV show, Clark hasn't been a journalist and that's because he took a step back and he's been focusing on being Superman but also focusing on being the dad and you know Lois is the reporter on the show now because normally Clark Kent would be a reporter as well however that's not a thing that they're going with right now but it does show the importance of both sides of Superman in the Arrowverse but you know in general as well and also the importance that his foster dad his Earth dad had on him as he was growing up and so it's a very short issue and it's pretty much done like after a couple of pages and then we move on to the final big part of the issue which is like the second part which continues from where we were before but on another Earth and so this is called Controlled Burn and so the issue begins with a controlled burn which basically is the harvesting of crops and it's a way to do it. I really don't know much about that so I'm not going to go into like full details. However that's how this issue starts and it later reveals that this is in fact the black suited Superman that we saw in season 1 of Superman Lois who tried to defeat John Henry Irons and killed Lois on their earth. And so this controlled burn comes back later in the issue when black suited Superman basically flips on earth and he goes after everyone using the same technique of a controlled burn but this time of entire cities so he destroys coast city with a literal nuke and he also destroys part of metropolis with his heat vision so he basically terrorizes the earth and destroys certain cities in the same manner that his father and you know the farmers would do with their crops However, this is obviously on a much bigger scale as he's killing people and everything has changed for evil Superman when his dad is actually killed in a car crash on the 4th of July and this leads him into a new foster family. His foster dad is abusive, he hates it there, he hates the kind of new siblings he has and he goes on to use his heat vision against his new foster dad. Then he's sent into custody and basically they try and control his powers However, he finds the crystal, he breaks out, he goes to his Amazon rainforest fortress and he talks to his Kryptonian dad Jor-El for the first time and he goes on to train and become eventually Superman and you know he has full control of his Kryptonian powers and everything and that's what leads him to becoming Superman and for a long time he's actually the savior of Earth and he is a bit different from our Superman, however, there is a lot of similarities at that point, but everything changes when Tao Ro, his brother from Krypton, shows up and convinces him to change his ways and give Krypton another chance, but on Earth. And so, this turns out, oh, he's the exact opposite of Superman. He was super open to this. Whereas our Superman obviously wasn't open to Tao Ro and his proposal of trying to create 
a new Krypton and bring back Kryptonians through Earth citizens. And then the issue ends with Magog showing up once again, who is again the big bad of the crossover, just like he took Clayface with him. He shows up and we just see his silhouette after the evil Superman goes after John Henry Irons, as John Henry Irons, as we've seen previously in the live action show, escapes to our Earth. And Superman, we didn't know what happened to him after that. However, it seems we're going to be getting the answer to that in Earth Prime as this is supposedly canon with what's happened in the Arrowverse. So Magog has been working behind the scenes, gathering these different villains. And at the end of this series, we're probably going to be seeing a big fight between our heroes and those bad guys. And I think evil Superman's gonna come back because he's working with Magog. And Magog's gonna show up with Clayface and all the other villains that are going to be showing up in the next couple of issues. So it's very exciting and hopefully you guys enjoyed the issue. But that about does it for this video guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. It would really help out the channel if you do that. Also, you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.